Hello, and welcome to Healthy Living. I'm Dr. Donald Pelto, and today we're going to talk about a different topic for New England, because during this winter time, it seems like it's just going on and on, and there have been many people that have come into the office with different types of cold injuries on their feet. And that's the, going to be the topic today. So you can see in this first slide is a picture of a foot that had uh, an incident with cold in injuries. And we're going to be discussing the different causes of cold injuries and more importantly, how you can prevent cold injuries and then as well, how you can treat cold injuries. So let's look at what are the different types of cold injuries that can happen to the foot. You can see on this slide a picture of someone's toes and there's a little bit of a blister on the big toe. And then the little toes have little areas of red right at the tips of the toes. This is a person that came in and they didn't know what was wrong with their foot. They had been out in the winter shoveling snow, wearing boots, going out for long periods of time as all of us have been doing in New England this year. And her toes became red and painful and itchy and she didn't know what was going on. And when she came into the office, she, wasn't, she was concerned. Did she have a problem with circulation? Did she have a problem with her skin? And we were able to calm her down and explain that what she had was an experience of something called chill blands or perneo. This is a, a condition that can happen in your foot when you get ex exposed to the cold weather for a longer period of time. And one of the biggest problems is if your feet sweat in your shoes. Many times people that go outside, they really get bundled up. They wear two or three pairs of socks and then they go out and work for hours at a time. And when their feet sweat, what happens is that, that sweat can freeze. It can freeze into the boot, freeze into the sock, and it can cause injury to the toes. So chill blands and perneo are, are very similar. They're a lighter type of a, of a frost or an injury to the, to the toes from cold. Frostbite, on the other hand, is a little more severe. Frostbite is where your foot actually becomes frozen. And this is not just for a few hours, this is exposed to cold weather for a number of, uh, it can be a number of hours, but it may even be a number of days. For example, if someone needs to be working outside or is living outside, they can get a condition called frostbite. And then something that isn't quite uh, a frozen injury, it's something called trench foot or a non-freezing cold injury. And this is a condition that can happen if your foot, it really doesn't freeze, but if it's been cold and especially wet for a long period of time. Alongside these conditions, we're going to look a little bit at, at a condition that many people may be aware of. It's called Raynaud's phenomenon or Raynaud's syndrome. If you look at this next slide, you can see that in the toes, there's certain areas that the skin is pink and there's other areas where the skin is white. And for many people, they see this in their hand. For example, in your hand, when you go outside, you may see that one of your fingers may be white and the other ones may be pink. This is a condition called Raynaud's, and it's a condition where the blood vessels in that one finger or that one toe is vasoconstricted or it's shrunk down for a period of time. It goes into something called vasospasm, where it, it, it spasms, and then there's no blood going to that finger or that toe. Usually this is for a short period of time and it's usually reversible and doesn't cause other conditions. These conditions of Raynaud's can also be seen with other health conditions. It's not just due to the cold, but it can be caused by other health conditions. I tend to find people with Raynaud's tend to be slimmer and slender and younger females that have this condition or, or slender females when they go outside that cold weather really affects them. That's called the Raynaud's condition. So what really causes a cold injury? Let's look at this next. You can see in this, in this slide here, the most common cause of a cold injury is extended exposure to cold or damp or wet. And it, that's what we've been seeing this year, isn't it? In New England, we've been out in the cold, we've been shoveling our walkways, we've been going for walks, trying to stay, stay active, and then your feet can get damp, whether or not you step into something or that snow then penetrates into your shoe or penetrates into your boot, and it makes your shoe and your boot and your sock wet and damp. And because of this, your, your toes, because they're so cold, in order to, to protect them and also protect the other parts of your body, you get vasoconstriction or vasospasm. Many times your body, it tries to keep the central part of your body warm. This is called your core temperature. 
Your core temperature is where all the vital organs of your body are located. So for example, your body is going to first try to protect your brain, it's going to try to protect your heart, it's going to try to protect your other internal organs before it, for example, tries to protect your fingers or your nose or these other areas that can be uh, problematic when it's very cold outside. When you look at the areas that get affected, it's usually what we call the, the most distal extremities. So you, the distal or the furthest part away from your, your hands, such as your fingers, the furthest part of your feet is your toes, and then also the tips of your nose and your ears. These are the areas when they're exposed to cold, they become affected most commonly. That's done, it vasoconstricts or stops the blood flow to those areas to shunt the blood flow and shunt all of the warmth to the inner part of your body to keep that area warm. Once again, who is affected by these cold injuries? You may want to know, am I at risk? Those that are at risk are usually young and middle-aged women. It's more common to have these cold injuries such as pernio and these little red toes like we can see in this picture in young females or, or slender women. Also, you have to be careful of the children when they go outside because the children can also develop these conditions. And then those that are a little bit older once again, a little bit slimmer, you can have these conditions of cold injury. These are these common cold injury issues where it turns red, maybe a little bit of blister, and this tends to go away over time. If any, anyone, it doesn't need to be any of these types of people, if they're outside for days on end, or if they do, let's say, a lot of hiking outside, you're much more prone to getting frostbite or one of these other types of conditions that can happen to your foot or your toes. Also, people that have low body mass, meaning they're very slender. Uh, those that are diabetics, you have to be very careful because with diabetes, what can happen is you can have poor blood flow to the extremities. The blood flow going to your toes, the blood flow going to your feet, it can be reduced. And with that reduced blood flow, it can affect the circulation. And then someone who would normally wouldn't have their toes get cold or get injured because of the cold, they don't recognize that or they do recognize it, but there's nothing they can do about it. It gets colder than normal. So you really have to keep bundled up if you have diabetes. One of the other conditions of diabetes that can affect your toes is something called neuropathy. And neuropathy is a condition where you don't have any sensation in your toes. And because of that, if you don't have any feeling, you could become frostbit, you could have frostbite or another cold injury on your toes and not know it and they would just continue to be problematic. And sometimes that can even lead to death of some of the tissue, and that's called gangrene. That, that's where it really turns to a, a dark black color. And, and that's something that's very dangerous because with a gangrene, it's very common that you're going to lose that extremity, whether it be a toe or a part of your foot. We also see people uh, with, that are in the military that, that get this condition because those that are in the military they tend to be out in extreme climates, both hot and cold, for long periods of time where their, your feet get wet. And what we, we saw that in a lot of the uh, previous wars where people were, let's say, involved in these areas where it's very cold and swampy, their feet really got affected by some of these cold injuries. And these thermal injuries weren't the freezing type. These were the, the non-freezing type that we're going to show a few pictures as we go on. And how do you tell if you have a cold injury? Well, if, if you look at these pictures, these are really classic for a beginning type of a cold injury. This type of a cold injury isn't where your foot is frozen. This is a type where you've been sensitive to the cold and you tend to see swelling of the toes. So if you see that only at the tips of your toes, such as this picture up on the top, if there's swelling in the toes, you may have a cold injury or if the swelling takes a long time to go down. People sometimes come into the office and they think, well, do I have gout? Do I have arthritis? Do I have something else? But many times if they've been outside in the cold, they could have a cold injury to their toes. Do you see on these pictures these little red dots? People come in with these red dots and they wonder, what is it? Is it a malignancy? Is there something, a dermatological problem on my skin? Did I get a blister on my skin? A lot of times what happens is these cold injuries, it affects the, these, the tips of the toes and there's these little red spots that develop. And these red spots, they'll eventually may change color, they may change black, and they may slough off the skin. They may create a type of a blister and that blister is gonna kind of come off the skin, kind of like a scab, because that's all dead skin. That red area is gonna be dead skin that's gonna need to slough off and turn over. And you'll also usually see this in the fingers and the toes. 
And many times you can see blisters because you see on the picture on the bottom on that big toe, that little area of red is turning into the blister and also the, the areas on the toes, there's gonna be blisters. And if these blisters become too big, they can kind of open up a little bit. And when they open up, they can, we call ulcerate. And ulcerate is nothing more than a blister that kind of pops and you can see that, that red beefy tissue uh, underneath the ulcer. And when you can see that, that that's kind of a more severe type of a, of a cold injury that someone may have. And most people, when they come into the office, uh, their complaint is a little bit of the, 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 that red color, their toes may be a little bit of swollen, but as well, they, they, they're tender. They're very tender to touch for a long period of time. And that tenderness, for these types of conditions that we're looking at in these two pictures, this tenderness will eventually go away but it takes a long time. It may take a number of months. It may take until the summer comes around before uh, you, you have that uh, back to normal. And then while it's healing, people come in because they also have itching. And so they have itching of the toes and they sometimes think, well, do I have an athlete's foot or do I have something else going on? The itching is a normal response as your tissue is, is starting to become normal. One thing you have to realize is once you have a cold injury like this to your toes, you're more susceptible to getting a cold injury again. Because once you have it, your skin has been affected, it's been partially frozen, or it's been cold for a long period of time, you've developed a blister, you may develop some scarring, and next time you may be more sensitive to that cold. And, and people kind of, they wonder, uh, what, what can I do? You know, how can I, how can I treat it? And how, how can you tell if you have it? Well, really, if you have this, this cold intolerance or a lot of pain or injury, you, you probably have a cold injury. You should probably seek out professional help to take a look at it and try to figure out how you can, can treat that. Now, the next picture I'm gonna show you is a, is a little bit strong graphically, but I, I wanna show you an example of what someone that has frostbite looks like. This is much more severe than that, that simple little red dots. If you look at this next slide, this is severe frostbite. You can see the dark discoloration to the toes, you can see to the heels. This isn't something that happens in just two or three hours outside. This is something that's gonna be a number of days, maybe being exposed to cold, putting your foot in the cold, maybe not having a place to live for a period of time where your feet can get affected by, now this would be a frozen injury. And I want to explain the difference. When you have a frozen injury, when your foot is actually frozen, this is considered a medical emergency. This isn't something that you should treat on your own, that you should be just dealing with on your own. You should go to the emergency room because this needs to be treated. There are a lot of things that need to be done, uh, but the most important thing is you have to heat that foot up as quick as possible, okay? Because the, the foot is frozen to prevent any further injury. Probably shouldn't be doing that on your own. You also have to be aware of your electrolytes or how your nutrition is, how hydrated you are. All of those are important and also to prevent any infection when you have something like this, this severe frostbite. This other picture that I'm going to show you uh, is, is, is also graphically a little bit strong. And this is a condition called trench foot, or this is a, a non-freezing injury. If you think about it, it's kind of like when you, when you have dishpan hands. For those of us that, that do dishes, uh, you put your hand in the water for a number of, let's say, half hour, and when you pull it out, it has those little white dots on it. And that's what we see here in this picture. This area of that whiteness on the bottom of the foot is something that has been exposed to cold, but more importantly to dampness for a long period of time. And what happened is their sock got wet, their boot got wet, they were outside for a long period of time, they couldn't, they couldn't dry off their foot, they couldn't change their shoes, and they had to be outside, whether because they're in the military or because they're working outside or something else. And when this happens, you see that white skin that looks very, very raw. And the way you treat this is actually different than the previous picture of the frostbite. This isn't frozen. This is a, a non-freezing injury, but it's just as dangerous, if not more dangerous. Because what people tend to do is they wanna heat this up very quickly, and then they keep walking on their foot once it's kind of warm and feeling better. With this type of a condition, you need to not so much heat it up quickly, but what you need to do is you need to dry it out. So you need to dry off the foot, you need to elevate the foot, you need to slowly warm the foot, and you have to be careful because with this dampness, it's very common that you could get an infection, you could get a cut in the skin, you could develop a fungal infection. Any one of these problems could happen because of having a foot like this. This is a, a very dangerous type of a condition. Once again, this type of a condition 
shouldn't be treated on your own. It's something that you should be seeing a, a professional about, and you should actually be going to the emergency room for this. Now, you may be asking, the winter is finishing up here in, in, in New England, but how do I prevent or how do I treat these minor cold injuries? Our focus is going to be more on the minor cold injuries because these major ones, like the last two pictures I showed you, it should be treated by a professional. You should go to the emergency room if it just happens. You shouldn't be trying to treat it on your own. But for some of these minor ones, when people come in with those little, couple of little red dots or little red blisters on their foot, uh, first I just assure people that usually this resolves on its own. It's something that'll kind of resolve, the skin will normalize, but it could take weeks to months for that to resolve. The, the most important aspect is to prevent it from getting worse, and that means keeping your foot warm. A few tips I give people to keep their foot warm in the wintertime is one, to use a hand warmer. You can see the picture here of these hand warmers. These are hand warmers, but you can also, there's foot warmers, you can put them in your, in your boot. There are some electric kind of socks that people wear that you can put in your shoe as well. But simply, if you don't have either of those, making sure that you have a nice wool sock that's able to wick away the moisture or one of these new synthetic socks that wicks away the moisture. Changing your sock, let's say if you're hiking for a number of hours and you find that your foot is sweating, changing your sock to a dry sock. If your boot's wet, letting your boot dry out because the, the concern, the main concern isn't so much the cold, the concern is when it gets wet and that's when it gets kind of almost frozen and that's the concern that you have. Also, if you do smoke, smoking is not good because smoking can slow down the circulation and every time you take a puff, it actually vasoconstricts the arteries and that's bad. Uh, if you're having some minor symptoms, uh, your doctor may prescribe some steroid creams and then if it's more of a severe case where there is some cuts in your skin, you may have to treat any type of infection, whether that may be a fungal infection or whether that may be a bacterial infection. Now looking at this last slide, if it is frostbite, if your foot is actually frozen or a toe is frozen, uh, this is more of a severe injury. Once again, you should be seen by a professional. I can't emphasize that enough. But if it's frostbite, frostbite needs to heat up quickly, okay, to, to, un, to defrost that foot. Uh, but you have to do it under, under medical guidance to do it the proper way. If it's not frostbite, as I mentioned before, you have to dry out the foot because the, the dampness is the, is the worst part. Elevate the foot and keep rested. Also, keeping hydrated is very important because with any of these types of injuries, dehydration, you, you need the hydration to bring uh, just the normality to your foot. And then don't walk or rub your foot. Many times we see people when they have an injury to their foot, they, they try to rub it. And when you rub it, it's going to develop blister, that skin's going to slough off, that's going to cause more types of problems for your foot. And I, I just recall uh, one little story as I was a, a Boy Scout growing up, we, we used to always go camping. And as, as scouts, we were always outside and we had, the, it was called the Klondike Derby. And we used to go out and our feet were very, very cold. And we, we always, afterwards, we took our boots off and we, we were putting our feet up against the fire. And all I remember is that when I, when I finished putting my boot uh, up to the fire, my whole boot kind of melted. And uh, so you have to really be careful. If you're outside, if you're hiking or if you're camping outside, be careful to not get it too warm, your boots or anything else when you're warming it up. You have to be really careful for these cold injuries, but they are preventable, but it's something that's very important here in New England to make sure you're properly warmed and your feet uh, do not get too wet and they're dried out quickly to prevent any other cold injuries.